Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And right now my most popular video is where I make this concrete rocket stove. So today, I want to do a riff on that and make one out of mud. Stay tuned. Welcome back, subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's gonna appear in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen throughout the video. While concrete is an amazing permanent building material, it is pretty resource intensive to create. So I wanted to try something a little more earth friendly, given that this is a green channel after all. So I've been curious if I could get the same results or similar results making this rocket stove out of mud. Cob is what we're talking about here. I'm gonna do a mixture of clay and sand. I'm gonna leave out the hay because of the heat we're dealing with. My rocket stove video has been viewed around the world. Places like Korea, Venezuela, Australia. And one thing I think we all have in terms of building materials is earth. And in many soils, like here in Georgia, clay isn't hard to find. In fact, I just dug a hole in my lot down about a foot and a half and I found some pretty great clay. I was also able to mine some sand from the local creek behind my house. So I'm gonna use those two materials and mix them together and I'll use the same forming materials that I use for my concrete rocket stove. Five gallon bucket, PVC pipe, half gallon milk jugs, and cardboard to make this dirty version of my rocket stove. Let's get started. I dug up my clay a couple days ago and then put it out on this shower curtain liner to dry in the sun. I'm using an iron rake to spread it out as thin as possible and start to break up the clumps. Of course, I'm using the back side of the rake so I don't pierce the shower liner. You can also use your hands to break up clumps. When I was cutting it out, I shaved it pretty thin so it would break down into smaller pieces easily. And I walked on it a little bit after it was dry to break it down a little bit more. My sand has also been sitting for a couple of days and I've got it in two buckets that have holes in the bottom to allow it to continue to drain. It's still gonna be a little damp though when I put it on the screen. The sand is actually still too damp to go through the window screen. So I'm gonna to have to switch to a larger mesh to screen the sand. And that'll get most of the pieces that I'm concerned about getting out, mainly the rocks and gravel. I can live with that. I'm going to save this gravel for another project. As I screen my sand, I'm going to spread it out evenly over the clay. My goal is a ratio of one and a half parts sand to one part clay. And so I've got about a half inch layer of clay underneath, and some going for about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch of sand on top. So it's a bit of a loose ratio, but we'll see how it mixes up. Note that I'm using a coarser grade of sand that I got from the creek. So you definitely want to use a construction sand if you're buying it by the bag versus a sandbox sand. Of course, if you're buying your sand at the store, it's a lot easier to measure volumes. Background noises today brought to you by Bob's Tree Service. Given that my screening yielded almost a full bucket of gravel, I went back to the creek to grab another half bucket of sand. 
keep in mind if you're getting creek sand to keep an eye out for glass since we're going to be mixing the clay and the sand together with our feet. Make sure this stuff doesn't end up in there or you'll find it later with a toe. Well that was a lot of screening. Thanks for sticking around. But in this case, screening means free. I didn't pay for the sand, didn't pay for the clay, and I'm willing to make that exchange of work for money in this case. It's time to mix it. First, we'll mix our two elements dry by pulling up the edges of the shower curtain liner. You can use your hands here too. It's like a pretty good mix, and it helped that I had those two even layers to start with. Next, we'll mix wet. I'll slowly add rainwater as I mix with my feet. This is the fun part. mixed. I'm looking for about the same consistency as concrete. A drier mix of concrete. I'm also looking for an even color. That tells me I've mixed the sand and the clay together well. This will actually keep for a couple days. Just wrap it up tightly in your tarp or shower curtain liner and tuck the ends in as well. I'm using the same form work from the concrete rocket stove. Here's how I set it up. Keep in mind that your bucket is going to be damaged in the process of making the rocket stove but not so much that it can't be used to make another one. I'm actually using a bucket that I had that had a hole in it already. All right, now we're gonna put in our spot for the firebox. Now, what I do with this design is the firebox actually comes out the bottom so that instead of having a tube located about here where the firebox goes in and then up, there's no bottom to the firebox. And that allows us to stack it on bricks or concrete or something to enlarge the firebox however we want to. That's gonna allow us to potentially put more fuel in the rocket stove to make it burn hotter if we needed to. We're gonna be using a half gallon milk jug to make our firebox. And I like that because it gives us a square profile. It's gonna be a little bit easier to get our fuel into the firebox. It's gonna give us a little more room. And the straight sides are also gonna do well as we use bricks or blocks to make our firebox bigger. Start by tracing the outline of our milk jug on our bucket. And we want to line up the, the side, one side with the top rim of the bucket here. Now we'll use our handsaw to cut out our marking. Then we'll cut across the curve of the bucket to cut the bottom out. Cutting it this way is a whole lot easier than cutting a circle out of the bottom of the bucket here. Now let's just check and see that our milk jug fits. Excellent. going like this and you can see how our firebox is going to be formed. So while our milk jug is still in the bucket, I want to mark the length we'll need for our PVC pipe that's going to form the chimney portion of the rocket stove. Just make that mark there and then cut this to length. 
All right, so let's do a quick test fit. Tube goes in the bottom, and our firebox sits right on top. The way we're gonna make this easy to come out of the form is that we're gonna line our bucket and wrap our firebox and chimney forms with cardboard. The cardboard is gonna provide you know, an eighth of an inch of space that's going to allow us to very easily slide the whole rocket stove out and to then remove the firebox and PVC once this thing is dried. Let's prep our pizza boxes by cutting off the sides and separating top from bottom. This amount of soil is probably okay. That amount of residue is probably a little too much. Once the pizza boxes are cut, working with the grain, you want to roll them up. We're going to tape it into the bucket. Putting a little outward pressure on the cardboard to keep it against the side. Two pieces doesn't make it all the way around, so I'm going to overlap the pieces of cardboard evenly. Keep in mind that because this bucket has a taper, the cardboard is not going to sit straight on the sides. Alright, now that our bucket is lined, we're going to trim the cardboard to the top of the bucket and cut out for the firebox opening. Instead of cutting down through the cardboard like this, I'm actually going to work from the inside so I don't undo all my nice taping. So if you slice down from the top to you hit the rim of the bucket, then you can work your box knife through and then just slide it around the lid. Give a little more caution where you're working through two pieces of cardboard. When I get to the firebox opening here, I'm going to stop and work on that. Use caution here. This is where slicing your finger becomes a danger. Now we'll wrap our chimney portion and firebox with cardboard as well. But before we do that, we need to fill our milk jug with water. Our PVC is perfectly strong enough to hold back the concrete, but our milk jug would just collapse under the pressure. So let's fill it with some rainwater, and then it's going to be a lot more substantial. One half of the pizza box does a great job wrapping four inches of PVC. We're going to make sure that the bottom lines up nicely and then tape this in place. Don't forget that our pipe stops right about there. Alright, once we got this wrapped, we're going to press down to find out where the pipe actually stops. And then we're going to cut there and, and cut around half of the cardboard. The firebox is going to sit right in here like that and these will form the sides of the firebox. 
in the concrete rocket stove build, I put the pot standoff bolts through the bottom of the bucket in these holes. I'm going to add the pot standoffs after I remove the cob rocket stove from the form. I'm afraid that pulling them through the bucket as I pull out the stove would just rip them right out. So I'm going to wait and let this thing dry, drill holes, and then add the pot standoffs. Another element we're going to handle differently in this application is the armature. We use chicken wire in the concrete, but I need to go with something a little more beefy for the mud application. You can use fencing or mesh. You could even use that same quarter inch screen that we used for the sand. But I don't have enough of this, so I'm going to opt for my half inch mesh. I'm going to measure my bucket circumference and depth and then cut my armature. 14 by 36. I'm actually going to reduce my depth by half an inch. As I cut the mesh, I'm going to leave the box open. In other words, I'm going to leave myself a piece of wire to bend around the other end of the mesh to close it off. As I cut my other dimension, the height, I'm going to leave the box closed because I want clean ends on both ends of the mesh. Once my mesh is cut, I'm going to form it into a cylinder, tucking the open wires into the box of the closed end. And then I'll use my pliers to twist around the open wire. Using the plier to bend it up. and then push it over. Get the other end set so this is nice and tight. So I'm actually going to use a stick, little stick to push these up. Now that they're pushed up, I'm going to push them over. This doesn't have to be pretty. We're just looking to close off this circle nice and tight. All right, so I'm going to finish this up. All right, all set. All right, so 30 inches was way too wide for my armature. So rather than recut this and rebend it, I'm actually going to just bend a pleat in the armature. I'm going to leave this a little open just so the it won't create a weak spot. The pleat allows me to reduce the circumference of the mesh. It gives me a nice gap between the cardboard and the mesh. Now that we've got our mesh fitting, which is about gives me about an inch of gap between the edge of the cardboard and where the mesh starts, we'll get the chimney tube centered and then add in about an inch and a half of mud. I'll be applying my mud with my garden trowel and a tamping stick. Once I've got some mud loaded in, I'm going to tamp it down. Keep some even pressure on my chimney tube so it doesn't move. Once I've got the nice even layer on the bottom, I'm going to slide in the armature. I want to make sure that my pleat and my seam are not towards the firebox opening. Make sure that 
sure this is centered and then work it down in to the cob. And I want my the base of the mesh to line up just below the top of the cardboard. Now with our mesh in place, we'll continue adding mud. I'm going to start by tamping against the mesh here. to work the material through it. Well, I'm getting it down by down the sides here where it's pretty narrow. So I'm making little pancakes of it with my hands. Dropping it down. I'm using a more narrow board to tamp outside the mesh. Gonna build this up one shovel at a time and tamp it down. My armature's starting to go a little off center, but I'm not concerned about that. The main thing is it doesn't touch the edge. So I'm gonna keep on tamping. Once I reach the level of the firebox, I'm going to cut the mesh down the middle and then bend it back so it'll support the sides of the firebox. Now we add the milk jug. Not only is this more economical, more environmental, it's also a lot more fun to work with. The old mud pie. If we have any surface imperfections on the outside, this stove can just repair it a little cob. I tightly wrapped up my excess cob to keep it moist until I take the stove out of the form, since I may need it for patches. I'll cover the stove with a frame 
container lid and a brick to allow it to air out and be protected while it dries. There you have it folks, the dirty rocket stove. A rocket stove made out of mud. I've got the hands and a dirty camera to prove it. I'll wait about two weeks before I take this out of the form and then we'll go through a process of slowly drying it further. That'll be another video. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green, or in this case red, so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.